a mile from your house. Adam, this has gone too far. You're oh, telling me. What about your wife? Is she okay? Back east at her niece's wedding. Well, at least she's safe. Look, I don't want her to know about any of this, you understand? I understand. Keep her. It's Rogers. Yeah, it's clear. What is it? Find anything? Yes, sir. Found some shell casing. Looks like they're from an M16. Yeah, that's it? Well, there's something else. Something kind of weird. Now, come on, Rogers. Don't keep it a secret. What is it? Well, it looks like a flower girl and like... The hippie kids used to wear in their hair. You know, back in the 60s? First, this package in the mail. This could have been a bomb, but it wasn't this time. Keep the faith, Captain Greer, baby. You haven't been known as Captain Greer for almost seven years. Barney, we've been... And these pictures, all of you, going into a restaurant, the cleaners, and a gas station, and drawn on each one, a little peace symbol. And now, this. Adam, these are all symbols of the past. Nobody said peace, keep the faith, or worn flowers in, what, six or seven years? Which is just about the time that the Mod Squad broke up. No way. Well, there's no connection. There couldn't be. Isn't it ironic? You were always after me to turn them loose. Oh, that was then, Barney. They did have a great feeling for people, and that's something you never lose. Well, I can't. They've got new lives, uh, responsibilities. They've got families. I seem to remember that the four of you thought of each other as family. I'm sorry, Barney. I just can't do it. Well, I can. Adamson and resting staff are outside. Did you locate my what? My ex-wife? No. You checked the beach house. And her new place. I'll keep trying. Thank you. What about the meeting? Uh just have Phil come in. You okay? What do you think? Stop torturing yourself. Now look around, you're not doing so bad. Bill, my father did all this. This is his company. If he was still alive, I would not be here, believe me. What do you want to do about the staff meeting? Some important decisions have to be made. You make them. Why don't you go someplace? Get away! I get away every weekend! I am sick and tired of getting away! All right? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I shouldn't take it out on you. Go to the meeting, please. What if I decide to give myself a big raise? Do it, you deserve it. I'll let you know how it goes. You look good, Doc. I'm sorry, sir. Do you want to take a call from Police Commissioner Metcalf? Put him up. Just a moment. 
moment from Commissioner Metcalf. Look like you're members of the trick riding team in the rodeo. You go help Clay put the horse away. What's new in town? Nothing. Nothing never changes. That's why I like Northern California. <laughs> I take that back. There's a guy back at the house. There's a phone call for you from Los Angeles. I wrote the number down for you. It's a guy named uh, Metcalf. Your move, Dad. Okay, I'm coming. Here. I want to show you something. That's us. <laughs> you look funny. Not funny, just younger. That's Captain Greer. He's the one that's in trouble. I don't want to stay with Miss Sims. Why can't I go with you? You got school. So do you. And you're the teacher. Touche. But Mrs. Velasquez has given me some time off. I don't want you to go. I don't want to be away from you, not even for a day. But Captain Greer, well, he's done a lot for me. To be perfectly honest, if it wasn't for Captain Greer, I'd probably be dead right now or in jail. And you know what that would mean? What? I never would have found you. And now that I've found you, I don't know what I ever did without you. So, I guess we all one, right? You bet, big guy. Come on, it's my move.
good to see you, too. You two are beautiful. <sighs> I almost didn't come. I didn't want to leave my family. The guy's my family. How's your son, Link? Speaking of son... <gasps> that's Jason. He's gorgeous. Mm. He's gotten so big, he was like that when you adopted him. He's grown like a weed. I can't believe he's only 10. Julie, I don't suppose you brought in pictures of your family? What do you think's in my luggage? Clothes? <laughs> That's Melissa and Dan. She looks exactly like you. She is beautiful. Dan's pretty terrific, too. Well, you finally got what you always wanted. I'm so happy for you, honey. How's Donna? Fine, fine. Never could con you. Oh, come on, cheer up. Two out of three is not bad. Come on. Captain Greer... <laughs> I mean, Deputy Chief Greer is waiting for us. Deputy Chief? I'll never get used to calling him that either. Come on, I've got a car waiting for us. I've got a car waiting for us? <laughs> I knew you'd be the first one to sell out. Right this way. You've got to be kidding. It was totaled. It can't be. It's not. About three years ago, I pulled into the gas station where I trade. It had a for sale sign on the window, and so... Did you get a good deal? Nope. But it looks so much like the old Woody, I... Well, I couldn't resist it. How about a little Beach Boys, 1969? Talk about deja vu. you, Captain. I mean, Chief. You didn't think I'd make it, did you? I thought you'd be commissioner by now. Or mayor. <laughs> well, to me, you'll always be the captain. There is no way I could get used to calling you Chief. Well, you call me anything you want, only promise me you won't stay away so long next time. Uh, Listen, come on, sit down. Oh, you, you know Commissioner Metcalf, don't you? Good to see you, Please? sir. Oh, Link. Sorry. Sorry. Julie. Sit down, please. It's sure good to see you. I just wish this reunion could have been under different circumstances. Yeah. Uh, have you made any progress? No. The day of the flower child is long gone. Why would somebody wait so long? Maybe they were in jail and just got out. Or out of the country, maybe. We're computerized now. We fed in all the hard facts, plus a little guesswork. And we came up with six strong suspects. We're still cross-checking. Some of those may fall out. Memory lane, huh? Some of these guys should never get out of jail. 
Tell me about it. All right. Julie and I will start with this one in Hollywood. Keith Starr. Johnny Sorella. I used to know a man in Venice named Nick Locker. He might be able to help me to find him. Eddie Ross, he used to work at the Experience. We could meet you there. Okay. Well, uh, come on. I'll have to sway you in and get you some badges. Oh, and your weapons? No guns. What? The five years we were on the force, we never carried guns. We're not about to start now. Well, that was then. This is now. We're dealing with attempted murder. Now, either you carry guns or... Or we go home. I'm sorry, Kevin. Let's get those badges. You the man. Let's get the badges. Well, let's hit the street. Computer readout, suspect number one, Keith Starr. Prostitution, white slavery, ten arrests. Only one conviction, the bust you made. Last known address, Western Avenue, Hollywood. Here it is. This used to be a coffee house, it was a nice one. Honey, nobody around here has been in coffee in a long time. Really? That's a buck a piece. For what? Admission. <laughs> admission to what? To look around. You buy something, the admission applies. Thank you. Need some help? We're looking for someone. All we got here is books. We used to know a guy named Keith Starr pretty well. I heard we might find him around here. Yeah? Who told you that? Someone else who knew him pretty well. What do you want with him? It's personal. Aren't you going to charge them admission? They're regular customers. Now, what do you want with Starr? Ty said it's personal. Sorry. What the hell? Relax. Relax. Leave her alone. I said relax. They're cops. Of course they're cops, Marty. Send them up. <sighs> Whatever you want. Move it. Quite what you expected? Hardly. Come in. Sit down. Never thought I'd see you two again. Where's your colored friend? His name is Link Hayes. He's busy. Looks like you've been pretty busy, too. I'm into buildings. Real estate's pretty good in California these days. That's a long way from buying and selling teenage girls. You're one of those people who can only remember the bad times, aren't you? With you, what else is there? Look, I did my time. I'm not even on parole anymore. Besides, everything I'm into now is perfectly legal. I'll bet. What do you two want? Somebody took a couple of shots at Adam Greer. Remember him, Captain Adam Greer? I remember. That's too bad. I suppose you know nothing about it. Not a thing. No. How did it happen? Somebody was waiting on a ridge in the canyon, shot up his cars and went by. Ridge in the canyon? Sounds like pretty rough ground. Yes, that lets me out. Broken back. Little souvenir of a fight. Prison. Thanks to you three. Angrier. Suspect number two, Johnny Sorella. Grand Theft Auto, illegal possession of automatic weapons. Eight arrests, two convictions. 
both hours. Last permanent address, San Quentin. Where it'll be? Give me a hot dog and a cup of coffee. A lot of changes around here. Must be hot on business. Summer nights, we used to be busy until midnight. We've been around here a long time. Longer than most anybody. Have you seen him? Sure. Johnny Sorella. He was a bad one. Has he been around? He went to San Quentin. He's out. You're looking for him. Let's just say I owe him some money. Sure. Look, here's a number. I would appreciate it if you could put us two together. By the way, did you know Nick Walker? He's still in a novelty shop across the street. You know where I can find him? Sure. The graveyard. Punks. Four of them. A gang. Dumb old man tried to fight him. They got less than eight dollars. Four punks. Four heroes. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh, hello there. All right, punks. Buy something or move out here. Oh, stuff it, man. Oh. This is a free sidewalk. We're just having a good time with the little... Okay, thing. knock it off and back off, huh? Ooh. Back off! Yeah. You back off. Who the hell are you, huh? Just somebody who's been there. Well, why don't you just go back there? Hey, babe, oh. come on. You, come on, man. Come on, come on. you can take me. I'm only 16. Come on. Hey, will you get out of here? Hey, take it easy, huh? Yeah, take it easy, man. Before Mickey eat that stick. <laughs> oh, too much, you put too much mustard on your frankfurters. <laughs> Some things never change. We got to pay for the hot dog. Ah, thanks. Suspect number three, Eddie Ross. Armed robbery, a strong organized crime connection. 21 arrests, no convictions. Last known address, a roller rink in the valley. says he's dead. They say he was in with the syndicate and that they wasted him. If you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, we know what you mean. Sure you don't want to skate? Thank you. Probably a good start. Star's in a wheelchair and Ross going to be dead. things are and where they used to be. You know, the guy at the point of shop, we didn't fool them for a second. Honey, you can't expect to fit in like you did. If we made a mistake, I, I mean, maybe we can't help hey, it after. Hey. All I know is that we have to try, right? I think 
get out of this place changed. I'll meet you over there. Are you all right? Yeah, thanks to you. Did you get the license? It was too dark. Well, you just some party and kids coming out of the rink. You know, when this place was the experience, you guys busted a very heavy dope deal here. You remember that? Yeah. Yes. Um, 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 uh, but, but Pres Buck Prescott, that's right. He's not on this list. Well, let's have the captain run him through the computer. It's too late to do it tonight. He's probably home by now. Let's go get that drink. Check out the house. No, oh, take your time. It's a taxpayer. I want my money's worth. Until this is over, I don't want you staying in this house alone. This is my home, Barney. And nobody's going to scare me out of my own house. Sorry. I'm pulling rank on you. You're going to have protection whether you want it or not. I'm afraid it's not going so well. I miss you, Dan. And Melissa. Will you tell her I'll try to call her when she gets home from school? There's Pete and Link. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Hi. Hello. Whichever one of you sent me the beautiful flowers, thank you. You're making me look bad. I wish I thought of it. I didn't send it. Who was it then? Your husband. No, I just talked to him. How do you like that? Back in town one day and she's already got a secret admirer. Come on. <laughs> but we did bring you a present. Well, let's get started. It's not as hard as it was. 
Eddie Ross's disappearance was confirmed. According to the captain, word in the street puts the body somewhere between here and Vegas. Well, we got these three. This is Ray Clearman. He's a cog this time. We can eliminate him, he's dead. It's James Williams, ex-militant. Well, he seems in the clear. He's in a halfway house up in San Francisco. Bert Carey, he's in a Turkish prison, smuggling hash. Now, eliminating Ross and Keith Starr. Oh, Starr, by the way. He did hurt his back in a prison accident, like he said. That leaves us Johnny Sorella, and he's down in Venice. And the new one. Buck Prescott. His drug dealer will be busted at the experience. I don't believe this. Prescott never went to prison. The Court of Appeals reversed his conviction four years ago. We almost got killed busting him. Remember that kid who fell in love with you? Yeah. I felt terrible about that. Richie Weber? That's it. Yeah. He was a runner for Prescott, Julie. All you did was get in to tell us where we could find Prescott. It's all in there. Yeah, but here's the problem. Captain Greer was hardly involved in that case. Why would Prescott still hold a grudge against him? Was it a good thought? It still might be a good thought. We can have the captain run a cross-check on him. What if it's just a person who hates cops? In that case, we will be around long enough to collect our pensions after all. Not me. I can't wait to get home. When we were on the force, weren't things different? Or was that my imagination? Our generation thought we were going to change the world. Yes, maybe we did. Oh, by the way, I got a call from that cook. He thinks he can put me into Johnny Sorella. I think I'm going to check on it. I'll go back to the station and find out about the cross-check on Prescott. Wait. I always felt badly about Richie Weber. I know we had to use him to get to Prescott. But I'd like to know what happened to him. I wonder if he's still living in that same house. Do you think you could drive me over there? I'll give you a ride. We'll meet you back at the hotel. Okay. Now it's my turn. What are you thinking about? About you. Dan and Melissa. Link and son. So close. You know, when Melissa was born, I promised her that she would know how very much her mother and father love her. Not like me when I was growing up. With a mother who was never there and a father I never even met. You want to know something? It's the first time I've ever spent a night away from her. I'm not surprised. Sounds like you. How about you and Donna, you think? I don't see how. Just made a wrong choice. Again. I suppose you've noticed I've done everything I said I'd never do. I've become my father. In business, I draw nothing but aces. In my private life, I can't even draw openers. Would you mind if I asked what happened between the two of you? It was my own fault. Remember what things were like in those days? The war and the peace movement and all. Zero population growth was a big thing. We both said we didn't want any kids. Donna still doesn't. And now you do. But I don't blame her. She was honest with me. I'm the one that tried to change the rules in the middle of the game. Yes, I want a family. Now more than ever since I've seen pictures of yours and Link's. You know, it's gonna happen. There is a girl out there, but I just haven't found her yet. Let's not talk about this anymore, okay? Why don't I tell you what else was in the file about Richie Weber? Okay, why don't you tell me what else was in the file about Richie Weber? I thought you'd never ask. Strictly speaking, Richie should have been tried as an accessory. He was running for Prescott. The judge took into account his age and the fact that it was his first offense and his family's willingness to seek counseling. That's good. Well, that's what we thought. Unfortunately, we'd barely begun the counseling sessions when his draft notice arrived and he ran off to Canada. 
He drifted from Vancouver to Montreal and eventually to Sweden where he waited out the war. He came home right after the conditional amnesty period for draft resistors that President Ford had declared in 1974. Well, he spent six months in a convalescent hospital. Then I brought him home. And he's been here ever since. What's wrong with him? Drugs. He's in there. How is he? He's listening to music. This is Richie's nurse, Kate Kelsey. Okay, this is Pete Cochran. Hello. And this is Julie Bennett. How do you do? She was Julie Barr. So you're Julie. Now, Kate, don't start. That was a long time ago. What are you two talking about? What she did to Richie. I don't understand. Well, come on. I'll show you. Take a look. Then you'll understand. Well, go ahead. It's a one-way glass. CP, alcohol, who knows what else. Can I see him? You've seen him. It's all right, kid. When he got back to the States, he was worse. He withdrew into himself. I just couldn't leave him in the hospital, so I brought him home. Why all this? The only time he's not agitated or even violent is when he's around things from the past. I guess they bring back memories of good times. I guess it makes him happy. I really don't know. But I couldn't take him back to the past, so I brought the past to him. Richie? Do you remember me, Julie? He doesn't recognize anybody. Is there any hope? The doctors don't know. Physiologically, there's nothing the matter with him. His brain's normal. There was some damage from the drugs, but not enough to cause this. Good, Cirilla. Not much happening in queue. Plenty of time to get in shape. Who do you enter these days? Don't you know? I want to hear it from you. 
I heard you moved back east. I did. I came back to help out a friend. A friend? And you've got a friend? Adam Greer. Somebody took a shot at him with an M16. Yeah, naturally, you think that I... You used to deal a lot in weapons like that. Used to. It's a long time ago, thanks to you. You did the crime. And the time. Should have listened to you. Always slow learner. It doesn't matter how long it takes, so long as it takes. So you wouldn't know where I could find some of those Vietnam guns today, would you? You don't give up, huh? You still haven't answered my question. Sure. I know where you can find some guns. Talk to Hanoi, they got lots of them. Hey, Johnny, I need you at second base. said you can't go home again. They really know what they're talking about. I don't know if I can take seeing any more of the results of our work. It's like everything we've done has turned out wrong. Johnny Sorrell made it. There must be others. Well, there are lots of them. Now, how did you know we were here? Hey, I'm a detective. Remember? You're not gonna quit on me, are you? I'm thinking about it. Well, well, don't. I don't know if I can handle this anymore. How about if I buy the three your dinner and try to change your mind? Come on. There's a nice Italian place across the street. Sometimes I think it's too good. It's like you're not getting any older, just better. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, well, we still better get you looked at. The car's still running? <laughs> Let's try and find out. <laughs> so he faked the back injury to get light treatment while he was in prison. It worked so well for him that when he got out, he kept using it. I hope they never let him out again. Don't worry. You should have seen Link tackle the guy. This big bird can still fly. And tomorrow morning, he's going to get on an even bigger bird. Go home and be with his son. I'm really going to miss you three. Promise me we won't wait another seven years to see each other. It's a deal. Next time, bring Dan and Melissa. You bring Jason, too. You can count on it. All the best. I can't think of three people deserving more. 
Well, the three of you can drink all night, but I have a plane to catch. And as soon as you're done packing, we'll take you to the airport. Okay, the way cab fares are today, you are on. <laughs> Wrong. Look at this. You caught the wrong man, pretty Julie. So don't pack your bags. We're only just beginning. Star. He was definitely in Vegas the day those shots were fired at me in the canyon. So he figured he could get even with you and put the blame on somebody else. I mean, after all, Pete and Julie had already been to see him. He probably thought we had eliminated him as a suspect. I'm sorry, Captain. Our visit must have given him the idea. No, nah, whoever we're dealing with is a lot smarter than Star. If he wanted to kill you, you'd be dead by now. Which brings me to something else I've been thinking. The note in Julie's suitcase. The car that almost hit me. And your roses. Now, who did send them? And why? Well, what you're saying is that I'm not the real target. And the three of us are. What better way to bring us back together again than to take a couple of shots at the captain, throw a bunch of clues around point to the 60s? If we are the real suspects, then... Then Buck Prescott's looking better and better. We turned up Prescott once before. What do you say we hit a couple of the old spots? I could talk to Richie. His father said it was all right for me to come back. Yeah, on one condition. One of my officers drives you, and they pick you up. Okay. Did anyone ever tell you you were very sweet? Come on, get out of here. Why'd you buy this old car? It's a classic. You know how much it's worth? Huh? <sighs> like I said before, I never could con you. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Yeah. You sorry it abandoned? It wasn't at the time. But... Well, things didn't turn out the way I hoped. Hotel the way I expected. Did they ever? How come you never got married? The girl I wanted to marry. She married somebody else. Who's not been there, Lucky? <laughs> I want you to know something. I admire you. What? Well, Jason's part of it, but only part of it. I had everything handed. I still don't have my act together. You started with nothing, and you got more than I'll ever have. He said, things didn't work out the way I planned either. What do you mean by that? I thought I was going to do something important. You are doing something important. I wish I had a teachers like you when I was growing up. Teachers had been there. Teachers had cared. This doesn't happen fast enough. I remember the first night we were on a stakeout together. You told me about a guy that knew how to wait. Yep. Lived in a three-room house, 13 people, had to wait to eat, had to wait to shower, had to wait for somebody to outgrow their clothes. Yes, indeed, he knew how to wait. Know his name was? Gunga Dean. <laughs> Lincoln Hayes. I've never heard of him.
I didn't see her. You all right? Yeah, I was just scared. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I rang the front door, but there was no answer. It's still right for me to see Richie, isn't it? Oh, well, sure. Well, well, you know where it is. Kate's back there. I have to go to a meeting. I'm sorry. So it's you. I thought I heard voices. Who were you talking to down there? To Mr. Weber. I suppose you want to see Richie. He said it was okay. When you're ready to leave, knock on the outside door. Some music on. Scott used to hang out here. The owner's an old friend of mine. next to the family. You're right, I don't believe it. Come on. Willie. Uh, Willie, this is a good friend of mine, Link Hayes. Hey, Link, how are you? Come on, grab a stick and join. some unfinished business. Let me ask the help. Can I keep the picture? Sure, buddy. Thanks. De nada. All short? A couple of guys just came in. I thought you might like to know about them. Yeah. Aren't 
you're going to talk to me, Richie. You know, we had to stop Buck Prescott. He was pushing to high school kids. He was telling them acid, bad acid. I'm sorry you got hurt. But you were a part of it. I don't want you to be like this. I'm sorry for what happened. I really did care for you. want with Richie? To help him? If she really wanted to help him, she would leave him alone. Why? Is he worse since the first time we were here? No, he's not worse, but then... And what would it hurt? Julie feels worse about Richie than you'll ever know. Well, she should. You all should. What do you really know about it? Hmm. This guy Richie was working for, it's Buck Prescott. He was one of the biggest dope distributors in the valley. Richie was his runner. He might have even done some pushing on the side. Does that sound like an altar boy? Richie was a kid. So were we. Where's Julie? judge that way well it was there was this white guy and a black guy and they came into place and they talked to Willie for a little while and then uh, they left and then Willie she came out with a picture asking around if anybody knew you anybody say anything <laughs> what about their knees except me of course you didn't say anything did you Jay? Uh -huh. Buck it was the same two guys that busted you a few years back Jake you won't believe this I already figured that out. You, you did? Yeah. Well, it ought to be worth a little something, oughtn't it? Yeah, it's worth something. Here's a 50. 
Thank you, boss. Anything else I can do for you? Yeah, get the hell out of here, will you? So I can make a private call. Sure. I'm sorry, I guess I wasn't thinking Look, what if he would have come up to the hotel? Hey, Pete, he's up. I guess there's no question who the real topics are. If one man says you're an ass, ignore him. If five men say you're an ass, go out by a saddle. Hi. Have you sleep, Jim? Not too much. I'm sorry. I just came in to cross-check on Prescott. Computer likes him a lot. He just doesn't seem like the kind to play all these games. Time changes everybody, even the bad guys. Maybe he just learned patience. Where? What's he been doing for the last seven years besides fighting that old bust? He's been the invisible man since the middle of 76. Just between us, I don't think he spent any of that time in the monastery. Well, we can't sit around and wait. We're not. I put out an APB and ran a printout on his associates. The time factor's making it rough. All the addresses and phone numbers have been changed. I could help you make some calls. That's a good idea. You'll be safe here. I can drop you off the hotel later. There's got to be half a dozen bars around town that draw the same crowd as Willie's, and can I have to start hitting them? Fine. Right. see you later. Okay. They're getting too close, Mr. Perry. And I just had another phone call. Good. The sooner we get rid of them, the better. Well, where do you want to do it? Experience. Why, there. Yeah, poetic justice here. No, I like it fine. We're at 10 o'clock. Don't you worry none about that. I'll bring it with me. Frank Weber. Oh, Mr. Weber. Julie, I've been talking to Kate, and she tells me that Richie has responded to you like he has to no one else, not even to me. Well, you're giving me too much credit. He was just ready. No, I, I think it's you. He's the same with me. You have to be patient. <laughs> I've been patient for such a long time. I know. Look, Julie, I, I hope you won't think I'm out of line, but... Uh, would you mind coming out to the house? Well, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'd like to see for myself how he responds with you. I bring him to you, but... Uh... Oh, I understand. Well, I could probably be there about 10.30 if that's not too late. Oh, no, that's just fine. See you then. Don't push me, Jason. I'm thinking. Why do I get the impression you're trying to set me up for the kill? Is Mrs. Simmons feeding you enough? No, no, Jason, you're wrong and Mrs. Simmons is right. Now, you know you don't watch TV unless I'm there. We watch it together, but that's right. Okay, here we go now. King's Rook to Queen's Bishop 4. Now, what are you laughing at? 
Well, what do you see that I don't see? Are you sure we have this board set up correctly? I gotta go now, Jason. I'll call you in the morning. And I love you, too. Bye. You know what it's like to have a kid who's smarter than you are? Must be terrific. Where's Julie? She got tired and went back to the hotel. Is there any place Prescott could be that we've forgotten? I've been thinking about that for hours. And? Still sitting here. Chief Greer's office. Mr. Cochran, a man called and said if you want Prescott to be at the experience tonight at 10.30. He said everything will be exactly as it was seven years ago tonight. Prescott will be at the experience tonight at 10.30. Experience? It's kind of weird. That's exactly where he was seven years ago tonight. No time for waiting is over. What about Julie? Let her rest. I'll leave a message for the captain. here once, you know that. Ah, but today's date means nothing to you. I'm sorry, Miss Fairley, I don't get it, no. Maybe if I told you that my name is not Fairley, it's Frank Weber. Does that help? Well, I knew somebody named Weber. That's very good, Buck. Yes, Richie Weber. He's my son. Remember him? You should. You got him hooked on drugs. You got him helping to sell them for you. You ruined his life. And I won't forget that. And neither will he. Seven years ago tonight, I lost my son. And then, wait a minute, I was busted that night too, remember? Uh, you gotta give me a chance to explain. I had nothing to do with that. Oh! There might not even be a backstage anymore. We're gonna start something. Why not?
FP. We all had such hopes for Richie. Had? Sounds like you're giving up on him. There's no way you can change the past, is there? Well, you could think about the future, not the past. Mm -hmm. That's a very good thought. And if Richie is making the progress that Kate seems to think he is, maybe we can finally put the past to rest, hmm? To hope. To hope. You know, Julie, I'd do anything for that boy. I gave him everything he wanted. I didn't think I was failing him. I just don't understand how he got involved with that Prescott. Well, some of it was the times. It, it wasn't only him. All of us were rebelling against something. He was so young, so trusting, so easily exploited. Oh, I think it's getting late. Do you think we could see Richie now? Yes, you're right. Finish your wine, hmm? I'm not really much of a drinker. Oh, that's all right. You've had plenty. tonight at 10.30. Everything will be exactly as it was seven years ago tonight. Where was Julie seven years ago tonight? With Richie Weber. His house. I will take my cars out front. We decided to be friends. Look, uh, maybe it's me. I'll wait outside. No. No, let's, let's just give him a chance, really. We could uh, put some music on. Like 
Don't you mind putting them on? seventh anniversary of the night that you turned my son into that. You're feeling it already, aren't you? Feeling what? The PCP. What? Just a taste. But there's plenty more where that came from. Now you're going to know what my son has gone through all these years. Please don't do that to me. Do you know what you did to me? He was my only son. I wanted to give him everything. And he would have had it too, but you took him away. You're dead. I'll be able to get him back. You should have finished your wine. This is taking too long. Thank <laughs> you. 
You know you can't fly. I don't want to fly. I want to go swimming. In a way, to the way. Moving up to the big house. That's great. How did this father's gone? Are you going to be staying with him? Well, for a while. But at the rate he's improving, he's not going to need me much longer. Well, Richie, we've got work to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. did a great job for a bunch of old-timers. I don't suppose I could, uh, could talk into coming back to work, could I? No way. I didn't think so. I'm gonna miss you. You know, you don't have to wait till somebody takes a shot at you for all of us to get back together again. Yeah, I never thought of that. Sound. 